In today's episode on the It's Joel channel, I forget how to drive a car. I'm in neutral. There we go. I also have an incredible revelation about the longevity of the human body. My back is not going to last 80 years. And I realised that my back is completely <sighs> Oh, my back. Oh, ow. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And very quickly, if you're one of my 75% of viewers that are not subscribed to the channel, I would ask kindly that you do so now as it is completely free. It fills me with absolute joy. And of course, it quite literally helps me to create more of these videos. And well, I say more of these videos, it's not exactly a video I want to make. It's a little bit unfortunate. I've seen quite a lot of comments lately saying that I'm sort of the latest iteration or the UK version of Hoovy's Garage, a big, big channel based out in the States. And although that is extremely flattering, I couldn't pretend to be anywhere near the level that Tyler or Hoovy's Garage is. And I would like to think that I don't really have the same sort of thing because I have a load of, well, I have four good cars. However, now I'm starting to see why I'm getting that name a little bit more because actually right now, as we speak, half of my four car fleet are inoperative, not working. And of course, you know, the Range Rover is missing from the lineup behind me because that is still stranded in Wales, awaiting repairs. And we're going to pick that up hopefully next week and it should be all fixed. So stay tuned for that. But the other car, and you've probably seen from the title that is now dead, is my BMW 760LI. Now the observant ones amongst you might notice there's a wire hanging out the back of the car. Well, that's because that's where the battery is and the battery I believe is completely dead. I bought a trickle charger yesterday, a brand new one, which is meant to do sort of high capacity engines, high ampage and all the rest of it. And unfortunately when the battery gets to around five volts, it just says error. I also bought some heavy duty jumper cables suitable for cars up to six liters, which of course the seven series is and it's not worked either. So I'm gonna try that one more time. I've just plugged the trickle back in, but I'm getting the error message again, as you can see. I will try jumping it off the Mercedes, as although the Porsche and the Mercedes are both 3.2 liter engines, that Mercedes has a slightly higher output from the battery. So we'll try and jump it one more time off the Mercedes, but ultimately if that doesn't work, I'm going to attempt to replace the battery myself today in this video. So it might be a little bit more of an informative style video, but I think it will also be quite entertaining watching me attempt any sort of mechanical thing on a car. So without further ado then, I'm gonna pop this camera down, move the Mercedes a little bit closer. Actually, the battery's in the boot of the Mercedes. Actually, the battery's in the boot of, oh, no, it's not. It's not in the boot of the Porsche, it's in the front. Um, reverse the Mercedes up to the front or as close to the front of the seven as I can. And then we'll try and jump the seven from the booster points under the bonnet to the Mercedes or the other way around, I don't quite know. But I'm pretty, pretty sure that's not gonna work. I'm really just doing this to demonstrate what's happening. I think given that the trickle charger is reading error, that implies that the battery is the problem. I'm hoping it's not another issue like a starter motor or something like that. But today we can troubleshoot, try and hopefully go and pick up a new battery this afternoon. I need to take the old one out and just make sure I get the correct specification. Um, and yeah, hopefully fix the seven series, but right now it's completely dead, which isn't ideal. So let's give it a go. I'll tell you the funny thing about this situation is that the two cars that I bought accidentally, i.e. this Mercedes and the Porsche are the ones that I'm actually depending on at the moment. They're the only two that are working. Anyway, let's move this back. Uh, let's just start it up first. Seatbelt's really hard to get to in this thing. There we go. And you'll be pleased to know we are going to be getting this car valeted very soon. Anyway, let's move this as far back as we can and release the brake. Have a defective lamp, that's my front right fog, so that's okay. And let's see. I'm in neutral. There we go. OK. 
Okay. That's probably as close as we can get. So as you can see, if we just do a voltmeter test on this car, let's pop it to 60 volts. Tap this on the positive, which is on this side. There, and on the negative here, we're getting a reading of 3.37 volts, which matches up to what it was saying on the ring charger here. And this battery should be 12. So it's not holding or allowing any charge. So I do think it's a duff battery and replacing it should fix it. Anyway, that disconnected, let's fit the jumps to it and see first if that gives it any more. And obviously if it will start. It will be annoying if this doesn't actually work because these leads cost me about 40 pounds as they're heavy duty ones rated for larger engines. And I spent about 50 pounds on that trickle charger. So if neither of these work, that's about 90 quid down the drain. Although obviously I'll be able to use them in the future. But also a new battery is probably gonna cost me the best part of 200 quid, maybe 150. And then if that's not the culprit, then we're, well, 250, 300 pounds in without a fix. Right, they're connected. Let's get the Mercedes started and see what that does to the voltage on the seven. That's the Porsche key. That's the Beamer key. Where's the Mercedes key gone? There it is. Okay, ignition. And... Fun. We'll let that run for a few minutes, but in the meantime, let's see what this is reading at now. Which I'm guessing is not going to be. I mean, it is reading at 12.7. Interesting. So if it doesn't start then, is that implying that it's not the battery that's stuffed, but it's a starter motor? Hmm, 13 volts we're reading at there. Well, let's try and start it anyway. You never know. Ignition. Okay. Electric wheel, is that? Yeah. We start it. We're just getting clicking sounds like that. Hmm. Does that mean it might not be the battery then? In fact, it might just be... It might just be the ignition. Tell you what we'll do. We'll do a voltmeter reading now that the ignition's on and see if that has changed anything. Right, it's down to 11.6 now that the ignition is on. <sighs> I guess we have to try a new battery, don't we? That's the first thing, because if I don't get the battery replaced, I can't take it to a garage anyway if it doesn't start. So we'll try a new battery. I guess we can always take that back if it doesn't work. Ah, <sighs> what a nightmare. Right then, so all I've done so far is removed this little area here with that thing and also taking this off the top of the battery, which literally just unscrews like that. And then what we're gonna to need to do is get underneath here eventually to take the battery out, although you can access, as you can see, the negative and the positive terminal from up here. But to replace it, and obviously to take it out, we need to get under here and remove the spare. Uh, by the way, I've got an eight millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket ready to remove the terminals. I believe it's eight on negative and 10 on positive. Anyway, let's get to that in a minute. I'm gonna take the carpet out, put it down there, and then this swanky looking cover. And then we need to take the spare wheel out. Obviously we can still access it, like I say, but to slide the battery out, it comes this way. So the wheel needs to be removed. So that involves a lot of this. What a horrible noise. God, that is heavy. Bear with me. My back is not going to last 80 years. There we go. And interestingly, what you can see here is the air compressor for the air suspension. And the reason I know that is because it's basically identical to the one in the L322 Range Rover. As you might remember, when I got the car, I had this replaced. And so uh, noticed they're exactly the same. 
Right, so all we have to do then to get the battery out is undo this here, which I'm not sure what that is. I'll have a look in the toolbox in a second. This bracket, which will release the battery. And then we just need to undo the negative and positive terminals and slide it out. Simple as that. There we go. All right. So that's both of those out of the way. And hopefully we should be able to simply just slide this battery out. Ah, oh, there we go, right. So, take this one out now. These are proper heavy, by the way. It's about 25 kilograms, this battery. And so now we can see 12 volts, 90 amp hours, 900 amps, 900 CCA. So I need to find a matching battery, ideally, that I can collect today. So we can pop it on and see if we can start the car. But this is properly, properly heavy, bloody hell. I thought that spare tire was heavy, but this has got, well, so much heavier. Okay, there it is. Okay, so I've just ordered a new battery from Euro Car Parts, which I should be able to go and collect right now in Isleworth, which is about four miles away, so 20 minute drive or so. I think we'll take the Porsche actually. The Mercedes is, is better around town because it's an automatic gearbox and there's lots of speed bumps around here. But I haven't run the Porsche for a few days, well actually a week or so. So we'll take the Porsche for a bit of fun. Uh, 147 pounds that battery was. It's more or less the same specification as this, which is obviously very important. Uh, it's also recommended for the car. But most importantly, it will fit. I've just checked the dimensions and it will fit in there. I am, I am pretty suspicious that it could be starter motor that's causing the issue, but the symptoms can be associated with a completely dead battery as well. And the fact of the matter is, off camera, uh, my dad came home and we did a few tests. And when I had the jump leads plugged on from the Mercedes to the BMW, it was at about 11.7, sometimes peaking at around 12 volts. But as soon as I took the jump leads off or switched the Mercedes off, the battery went straight back down to about four, 4.5 volts. So clearly the battery isn't holding its charge at all. So I think, well, I'm 99% sure the battery is kaput anyway, so it needs replacing nonetheless. But obviously if the battery doesn't, you know, if the new battery still doesn't mean I can get the car started, then I'll need to look at getting probably a starter motor, which I know on this car, is the bonnet still open? Yeah, it is. I'm pretty sure on this car, it's all the way on the right hand side, I won't even be able to show you with the camera, but right under there, and to actually replace it, I believe you have to drop the manifold. So that won't be ideal if that's required to get the car started. And also, I'll need to probably get it recovered with my insurance company down to Ross's to actually get the thing there in the first place. So, fingers crossed then the battery works. Let's just get the Porsche all opened up and ready to go. In fact, I'd say this actually has more boot space than the Mercedes. So in that sense, this would be good for the battery. Anyway, I'll get this warmed up now. We might as well get it started. Let it do its oil check, which takes five seconds, as you guys know. There it is. And once that's done, we'll get it started, let the engine get a little bit warm and take it over to Euro Car Parts. Let's get a new battery for the seven. Fingers crossed this works. I'm absolutely loving the Porsche, by the way. It feels so, so special every time you get in it. It really does. More than the Z4 did, if I'm being totally honest. I would like to do a video talking a little bit more about how this compares from the Z4 in the future. Although having said that, I genuinely haven't spent much time with this car yet. I have still got this parrot thing attached in the car and I want to get rid of it, but obviously it goes through all the back of here. And uh, I wonder if anyone knows the best way of, of getting rid of it by myself. If you could let me know, that'd be great. But yeah, the gear shift feels so good. The car sounds good as well. I would like to do something with the exhaust. But having the intake and the engine right behind you just, yeah, it just, it does just feel special, this car, even uh, at these slow speeds on a dual carriageway. 
Okay, so battery acquired. It's in the back here. So it's an Exide Premium. It's 100 amp hours, 900 amps, 12 volts. And so let's take it out the Porsche and see if uh, this fixes our issue. Of course, with the 7 Series being dead, oh, that's the Mercedes key. Uh, there's no power to the boot, so you have to take the key out manually like that. And then there's a little manual key slot for the boot release there. Twist that, lift it up, take this back out and pop the key back in. And let's get all ready here, get all set up, get this in there, connect it up and see if the 7 Series roars into life. Right, so plastic covers off and let's try pop this in obviously positive this side negative on the other close those in and we'll do it in exactly reverse order so first obviously slide it into the correct place which is up there make sure these are out of the way again let's get the negative terminal make sure that's up here with me good okay and then uh, you can see it slots in pretty snug into there. Okay, so the new battery is connected. I haven't fixed in the bracket yet, which secures it in place. But I just want to see if it works first. So I suppose this is the moment of truth. I'm very nervous and I'm anxious that it's not going to work. But with any joy it will so let's start this that's good the ignition's working i'm just gonna go straight for it yes i fixed something myself yes <laughs> i have never been happier to hear the sound of a straight pipe v12 yes i am quite happy with myself oh yeah oh yeah and of course I'm gonna leave it running for a little bit and then we'll take it for a quick drive but what I'm gonna do now that it's running is just do a health check again and reset everything for peace of mind I have to say I'm quite happy with myself if you haven't already noticed I'm not the most mechanically minded person but well so that means when I do manage to fix something, it's extremely satisfying. Oh yeah, I am so impressed with myself. Look at me go, look at you go, Joel. Does that make me a mechanic? And everything seems to be working fine. I'm just doing the health check on the Carly. Uh, lots of issues coming up, but I think it just need a reset because the battery's clearly been fully drained. I was starting to panic that it was going to be a starter motor issue, but seems like it's not. There we go. So we've got the fault codes back up here. So let's just show results. I'm going to clear all the issues and that should be good. But we have a breathing. <laughs> we have a breathing and very much alive V12. I'm so excited to drive this thing now. Let's just repeat the check and see what else comes back up. But hopefully it's all clear. Ah, what a result guys, what a result. Well, I'm so, so happy as I've mentioned. Not bad for an afternoon's work. The car is running perfectly. I'll tell you what, I love this little stretch of slip road here because, well, you'll hear why. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've missed this car. The last time I actually drove this car was when I took it to Germany, which was a good, well, two, three weeks ago at the time recording this. So very, very happy. The car is running, well, fantastically. Cruise control and yeah, everything's fine. Of course, what I need to do now is take this down uh, to RBM Hampshire. Of course, I could go to other uh, dealerships or garages that have BMW coding software. However, I trust Ross and RBM and I've always taken this car there. So I'll make the journey down to them, hopefully in the next few days to get the new battery coded in. I won't drive the car anymore until that's done, just so I don't damage any electronics or the battery. So we'll get the new battery coded in 
and then the car will be good to go. Now, I do have a plan for this car, which you'll have to hear about soon. And yeah, I will let you let you know. But I think actually, I was going to take the Mercedes back to Wales next week when I go and pick up the Range Rover, because of course, I'll need to take one car and then my girlfriend will drive a car back and I'll drive the Range Rover home. However, now that this is running again, and I've just literally jumped on the dual carriageway in it, I've remembered how comfortable this car is. It's leagues above that Mercedes, leagues above. I've got my massage seat, actually no I don't. I've got my heated seat, my heated wheel on, and my massage now going. And so I think I will take this car next week to Wales uh, to go and pick up the Range Rover. So, super, super happy. Like I say, you know, great afternoon's work there. I'm so glad it's the battery and it's not something else. Everything seems fine, of course, we just need to get it coded. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate this has been more of a sort of DIY type video, just in how it's made and also in the content. But I trust that lots of you have found this interesting nonetheless, and we're pleased to know that the 7 Series is no longer dead and is back on the road alive and well. So thanks again for watching. Do stay tuned because most probably the next video you see on the channel is when I take not this, the Mercedes to iValet UK. And I may or may not have ordered a couple of parts to replace on that car because I saw lots and lots of comments about, well, let's just say the grill and a few other things. So hopefully we'll uh, be doing some bits to the Mercedes, but we will definitely be getting the thing detailed and I cannot wait to see how that thing scrubs up. So big thumbs up from me, hopefully a big thumbs up from you too on this video. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye.